Um, good morning, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here, and I want to give you a code review this morning. But before I give you the code review, I want to talk to you about multi-layer perceptrons. And so I'm looking on the Simply Learn website where they talk about multi-layer perceptrons. And they say MLPs belong to the class of feed-forward neural networks with multiple layers of perceptrons that have activation functions. MLPs consist of an input layer and an output layer that are fully connected. They have the same number of input and output layers, but have multiple hidden layers and can be used to build speech recognition, image recognition, and machine translation software. And then so it tells you how the MLPs work, which you can read that on your own, and it gives you a schematic diagram of how MLPs work. So that is the MLP, the multi-layer multi perceptron. And then so what I want to do now is I want to do a code review. And the thing is, is that um, SK Learn has MLPC and an MLPR. Uh, the C is for classification and the R is for regression. In Keras TensorFlows, you can create an MLP C or R with Keras TensorFlow. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a code review and we're going to create an MLP C in Keras TensorFlow and then we're going to compare it with SK Learn's MLP C. I thought that would be a good thing to do to talk about MLPCs. So the first thing that we did was we created a Jupyter notebook in Google Colab. And um, Google Colab is a free online Jupyter notebook hosted by Google. It's a great platform to use because it's free. You don't have to pay for it. And... Um, but it doesn't have a very good undo function. And actually, I accidentally deleted some code when I was making this Jupyter Notebook. So you do have to be very careful not to overwrite or delete code. Because if you do, it's going to be very difficult to actually get it back. But fortunately, I had the code written somewhere else. So I just was able to copy and paste the code that was written somewhere else. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import our libraries. And basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to import all of your libraries at the beginning of the program. But I don't do that a lot of times. But I did it this time. A lot of times I import like NumPy, Pandas, um, SKLearn, no, sorry, Seaborn and Matplotlib and everything else. I import it within the program, but that's not really how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to import everything at the beginning of the program. And that's what I did this time. So we import NumPy as NP that creates your NumPy arrays and performs numerical computations. We create pandas as PD that uh, creates your pet data frames and your series, and it also processes the data. We imported TensorFlow as TF, that's going to create your neural network. From TensorFlow, we're going to import Keras. Again, that's going to create, create your neural network as well. From sklearn.neural network, import MLP classifier. That's going to create your multi-layer perceptron classifier in sklearn. From sklearn.model selection, import train test split. That's going to split your data set up into training and testing sets. From sklearn.data sets, import make classification. So we're going to make some data with that module. From sklearn.preprocessing, import standard scalar. We're going to scale the data using the standard deviation. From sklearn.metrics, import accuracy score. We're going to check the accuracy of between the predicted values and the actual values. 
from sklearn.metrics import confusion matrix, we're going to create a confusion matrix of our predicted values and see how well they performed. From, Im from import Seaborn as SNS, that's going to statistically visualize the data, and we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and that's going to visualize your data. And then you want to know what version of TensorFlow that you're using. The reason why is because TensorFlow goes through lots of changes, and because it goes through so many changes, the data can be deprecated. So after we've imported our um, libraries, what we're going to do is we're going to set the seed. So tf.random.setseed42. And so when you set the seed, then what happens is whenever you run up the data, it's going to be the same every time you execute the program. We're going to use sklearn make classification to create some synthetic data. So in samples equals 1,000, in features equals 20, random state equals 42. So that's your classification. We're going to analyze the synthetic data using Seaborn. So sns.displot y. And then so you can see that the zeros and the ones are equally distributed. And since the zeros and the ones are equally distributed, you don't have to balance your weights, which you would have to do that normally. Let me just look over here, see if I have class weights here. I don't see class weights in here. Activation, solver, alpha, choice, learning power. I don't see any class weights in here. So because there's not any class weights, it's going to be difficult to use. But like in a lot of sklearn uh, algorithms that are classification models, you can balance your class weights such as um, I think it's logistic regression and random forest and stuff like that. But with the MLPC, I don't see any class weights, um, attributes or hyperparameters. And so you wouldn't be able to balance your class weights anyway. So that would be a little bit difficult. But in this particular one, you don't have to worry about it because the zeros and the ones have an even distribution. So after we have um, analyzed the target, what we're going to do is we're going to split our training data set up into training and validation sets using sklearns train test split function. So train x train x val y train y val equals train test split x y test size equals 0 0.2 random state equals 42. And then what we do is we print out um, the shapes of X train X fail, Y train Y fail. So you can see that in X train you have 800 rows of data, and in Y train you have 200 rows of data. We're going to standardize the features. We're going to use sklearns standard scalar to do that. So X train scaled equals scalar dot fit transform. X train, X val scale equals scalar dot transform X val. And now we're going to create an MLPC module with Keras TensorFlow. So we're going to build the model. The uh, first um, hidden layer is going to have 64 neurons. And the second hidden layer is going to have 32 neurons. And the last layer is going to have only one neuron and it's going to be a sigmoid. And the thing is, is that um, we're going to use activation as reflu and the it's going to be the same. That's going to be the default in the MLPC and sklearn. And then we're going to use um, the optimizer is going to be Adam when we compile it. 
and that is going to be the same as um, MLPC in SKLearn. So what I tried to do is I tried to make the parameters in Keras TensorFlow and SKLearn as close as I could get them as possible. So after we've created our neural network, we're going to compile it. Optimizer is atom, loss is binary, cross entropy, and metric six accuracy. And then we do a summary of it. And so now what we do is we have um, trained the model and we're going to set up my callbacks with a patience of 25. And history equals model.fit, x train scale, y train validation split equals 0 0.1, epochs equals 200, batch size equals 32, callbacks equals my callbacks. So it stops at 54, so it did early stopping. And then we check the accuracy between val loss and val accuracy. And the val accuracy is about 82%. So that really should be val. And then so we plot it on a graph. And so you can see the accuracy and the loss. And the val accuracy is not as much as the regular accuracy and the val loss is higher than the regular loss or the train loss. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make predictions on the model and so on a Keras TensorFlow when you make predictions you get a float you get a number between 0 and 1 so basically what we're going to do is every number that's greater than 0 0.5 is going to be a 1. We check the accuracy between the true values and the predicted values, and it's 83. And then you check your, we've created a confusion matrix, and you can see that when we created the confusion matrix, we had some errors in both the 1s and the zeros. So remember that our accuracy for Keras TensorFlow MLPC was 83%. Now we're going to build an MLPC with sklearn, which is another library in Python. So CLF equals MLPC, hidden layer size is equals 128, batch size equals 32, random state equals 42, verbose equals true, Already stopping equals true, fit X train, Y train. So we print the score. And then um, I just wanted to see the iterations. And so it stopped after 16 iterations. It said validation score did not improve more than TOL-0-000100 for 10 consecutive epochs of stopping. And now what I did was I plotted a curve of this so you can see the loss function and you can see the accuracy. So the loss function tends to decrease as the as it iterates as it goes to the epochs and the accuracy seems to me like it stabilized. So now what we're going to do is we're going to predict on the validation set. And so we've got all our ones and zeros and you don't have to do anything with that because it will automatically give you a one and zero and you don't have to do use any kind of arc max or integer or anything like that to get it to do work. And you had an accuracy score of 84.5. We do a confusion matrix and on the confusion matrix, the confusion matrix and the accuracy score scored better than um, Keras TensorFlow, which is interesting indeed because, you know, I just started working with Keras TensorFlow 
within the last several months. And so Carol's TensorFlow is supposed to be such a fantastic library. And so it's always very interesting to me whenever I find out that um, SKLearn has outperformed Keras TensorFlow. So that's interesting. But what we've done here is in this particular code review is we've showed you two ways to make an MLPC. One first way was Keras TensorFlow. The second way was SKLearn. And then you get to see the accuracy yourself to see which one performs the best. And in this particular situation, SKLearn performs the best. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video because we created a MLCPC, multi-layer perceptron classifier, which was the purpose of this video. So I would like to thank all of my subscribers for supporting my channel. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you want to be notified whenever I make a new video, please tick onto the bell button next to the subscribe button. And thank you for watching my video. I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.